Hi friends, in our last session, we have studied with progression laws. In that, we have seen arithmetic progression. And today's session, we are going to see geometric progression and example based on this law. This is Fezan Kagbi, and I welcome you all to our lecture series of machine tool design. So let's begin with our topic that is geometric progression. So you all have a basic overview of progression laws, right? You would have studied in mathematics that is arithmetic progression, geometric progression and harmonic progression. But in this we are going to use progression laws for speed distribution. Okay, which means obviously it is related to the RPM that is ratio of RPMs, right? So in geometric progression, the gear ratio between the two successive spindle speeds is going to remain constant remember so we can take an example of a four speed gearbox in that four speed means n1 there would be n1 n2 n3 and n4 right now what is the gear ratio in that so gear ratio is a ratio between two successive speeds which means n2 by n1 first ratio then n3 by n2 second ratio n4 by n3 third ratio right now gear ratio is denoted by phi okay remember that it is denoted by phi and in that in this law if we use this law then this ratio that is n2 by n1 will be equal to n3 by n2 will be equal to n4 by n3 remember gear ratio is going to remain constant when we are using geometric progression law okay now let's say that uh, we have z speeds available so the maximum spindle speed would be what so we would say nz so over here as you can see on your screen i have written n max that is maximum spindle speed in rpm which is equal to nz and minimum which means minimum spindle speed in rpm and obviously that would be what so the starting speed that is n1 okay over here z indicates a total number of speeds available on a spindle okay that could be n1 n2 n3 up to nz okay now we need to determine a speed steps which means successive speeds we need to determine we know that we have even done that in arithmetic progression okay so as you can see n1 is a minimum speed which is equal to n min now what would be n2 that we need to determine by geometric progression law so we would say that according to our equation phi is equal to n2 by n1 from that we can say n2 is equal to n1 phi where phi is a gear ratio okay it would be equal to n2 by n1 remember it would be equal to n3 by n2 n4 by n n5 n4 by n3 and successively we can say nz upon nz minus 1 okay now can i say that n1 is n minimum in second equation as you can see on your screen n1 is equal to n minimum so i can even write n2 is equal to n min phi right similarly next speed let's say we need to determine n3 so it would be equal to n2 into phi now we know from the second equation that n2 is equal to what n minimum phi okay so this equation of n3 will become n minimum into phi square similarly we can say n4 would be equal to n3 phi so in terms of minimum speed it, this n4 equation will become n minimum into phi raised to 3 right and if we have maximum speed that is nz so by using this previous equation we can say that nz would be equal to nz minus 1 into phi right that is the previous speed would be n z minus 1 1 less than n z okay and in in terms of n minimum we can write it is equal to n minimum phi raised to z minus 1 okay so that n z is what so we would say a maximum spindle speed so from this equation can we determine a relation between a gear ratio that is geometric progression ratio phi and z that is the number of speed steps how we can determine so we can say that n minimum into phi z minus 1 is equal to what n max so making phi z minus 1 as a subject we can write it as n max by n min right now making phi is a subject so we can say that the equation as you can see i have written n max upon n min raised to 1 upon z minus 1 so this, this is our equation to determine phi if in a data n max is given and n min is given while solving the numericals okay remember this now let's proceed further next we need to determine that by removing how much material from a workpiece we can shift from one speed to another speed for example that if i need to shift from n1 to n2 so it is obviously that uh, corresponding to n2 the diameter of a workpiece would be somewhat different corresponding to n1 the diameter would be different that is d1 okay 
so how much a material has to be removed or what what should be the range of a diameter that has to be removed in order to shift the speed from n1 to n2 so you can see i have written consider any two intermediate speed ranges let's say nk and nk plus 1 so over here we can clearly see that nk would be a smaller speed and nk plus 1 would be a bigger speed right so co corresponding to nk can i say the diameter would be of a bigger size of a workpiece why because in a denominator there is nk which is of a smaller value so obviously dk will be a higher value so i have written over your upper limit similarly corresponding to nk plus 1 which means a higher speed compared to nk so obviously the diameter would be a smaller one so over here i have written lower limit okay now let's proceed further we need to find out the range that is a material uh, that has to be removed from a workpiece so as you can see delta uh, delta dk is equal to diameter range which can be found out by using equation dk minus dk plus 1 now we know the formula of diameter we uh, from a cutting speed equation pi equal, uh, v is equal to pi d n by 1000 right so from that we can make d as a subject and we can write 1000 v upon pi into nk for dk and similarly 1000 v upon pi nk plus 1 which we have seen so finally this is the equation to determine delta dk now range ratio the most important term and a new term with respect to geometric progression law is a range ratio which is denoted by rn remember denoted by rn and it is equal to maximum speed of a machine upon minimum speed of a machine which means a maximum available speed which means n max and a minimum speed that would be n1 and which is equal to n minimum so this indicates the range of a speed and the ratio is called a range ratio now we need to determine a relation between a range ratio and a geometric progression ratio that is a gear ratio okay so gear ratio is a ratio between two successive spindle speeds and range ratio is a ratio between a maximum speed and a minimum speed remember that so how we can determine a relation so we can say that range ratio r n as you can see n z upon n1 i have written now can i say that this can be written as n z upon n z minus 1 right into n z minus 1 upon n z minus 2 into so on n3 upon n2 into n2 upon n1 so if you have a confusion i am taking a simple example see at the bottom of your screen you can see i have taken z is equal to 6 which indicates a 6 speed gearbox okay now we can write a range ratio for this 6 speed engine a uh, 6 speed gearbox that is rn is equal to n6 by n1 right now what I am going to do, I am going to multiply by a successive intermediate speeds which are available. Multiply and divide by successive speeds which are available. So you can see n6 by n5 into n5 by n4 into n4 by n3 into n3 by n2 into n2 by n1. So finally what I have got, I have got n6 by n1 that is a range ratio. But in every case that is n6 by n1 is what? So we would say a ratio between a two successive spindle speed similarly n5 by n4 ratio between two successive spindle speed so that is what so we would say that is a gear ratio so we can denote this gear ratio by what so we would say we can denote it by phi so as we know that for a geometric progression uh, phi is going to remain same that is a gear ratio is going to remain constant right as we know the rule of a geometric progression law so we can say that n6 by n5 will be equal to n5 by n4 will be equal to n4 by n3 so phi into phi into phi into phi into phi that is going to become phi raised to phi right so the range ratio become for six speed gearbox rn is equal to phi raised to phi so similarly can i say a generalized equation can be found out that is rn is equal to phi into phi into phi so we can say that in that terms it is equal to phi raised to z minus 1 right so what is z so over here in this example we can say z is equal to 6 okay and over here the power is what phi is equal, uh, phi raised to phi right so the generalized equation can be written as rn is equal to phi raised to what z minus 1 okay so remember this is the most important equation which we are going to use in the numericals so this is a relation between a range ratio and a gear ratio now from this equation even we can determine phi that is if in a data rn is given okay or we can say maximum and minimum speeds are given so we can determine rn and by using rn even we can determine phi if it is not available in a data so how we can do that so you can see that making phi as a subject from this equation we can write phi is equal to rn raised to 1 upon z minus 1 okay 
Now let's proceed further. I have taken an example that let's say maximum spindle speed is n max that is 385 rpm minimum spindle speed is n minimum that is 30 rpm now number of speed steps z is equal to 12 which means i can i can say that it is a 12 speed gearbox let's say cutting speed given is v is equal to 20 meter per minute so as we have determined the equation of uh, phi that is generalized equation phi is equal to n max by n mean raised to 1 upon z minus 1 even we know that we have seen previously n max by n mean is what? So it is a range ratio R n. Okay. So n max is given in data that is 385. N minimum is given 30. So the final gear ratio we have obtained is 1.261. And remember, in our geometric progression law, this gear ratio is going to remain constant in every step. Whenever we shift from first speed to second, second to third, third to fourth, this phi is going to remain constant remember that now let us see i have shown a table based on this as we have even discussed similar case for a arithmetic progression so the same example i have taken so as you can see that i have shown the 12 speeds which we are which we are going to calculate uh, by using our geometric progression law which means uh, initial speed n1 is given and final speed n5 uh, n max is given that is 30 was given and 385 was given right now we have determined phi so you can see that in every uh, determining every speeds we are going to multiply by a constant gear ratio that is 1.261 okay so this is going to provide a speeds intermediate speeds from n1 to n12 okay by using our equation that is n2 is equal to n1 phi and uh, n3 is equal to n2 phi n4 is equal to n3 phi right okay so this is how we have determined now second column is of a gear ratio that is phi which is we know that nk plus 1 upon nk or we can say of uh, successive spin ratio between two successive spindle speeds so obviously that in our this law this is going to remain constant okay next column is of a diameter we have determined a diameter corresponding to each spindle speed so how we have found out this value so we would say we, we have used the equation vk is equal to 1000 v upon pi and k okay so we know that v is going to remain constant cutting speed is fixed which is given in data 20 meter per minute and n we are going to take a corresponding value that is for 30 uh, rpm we have determined diameter is how much required 212.21 okay similarly for all the speeds we have determined the corresponding diameters and now delta dk so you know i have explained that what is delta dk so it is a diameter range so this is indicating that for shifting the speed from a 30 rpm that is n1 to n2 that is 37.83 rpm how much material has to be removed so we would say 43.92 mm material has to be removed which means uh, initially it was 212.21 removing this much amount of material so what uh, what would be the next diameter of a workpiece so it would be 168.28 mm now once we arrive this diameter of a workpiece then only we can shift the speed that is 37.83 rpm similarly indicating that for this n2 we can say that how much material has to be removed in order to shift to n3 so we need to remove 34.83 mm of material from a workpiece having a diameter of 168.28 mm at a rpm of 37.83 in order to shift to the next spindle speed that is n3 which is equal to 47.704 rpm right so you can clearly see that a speed distribution in this case is much better compared to the arithmetic progression in this case you can see that we get a good distribution of speed that is the next spindle speed is how much so th after 30 it is 37 then after 37 it is 47 then after 47 it was 60 whereas in ap we were getting a second speed that is n2 is equal to 62 rpm you can refer the previous uh, video in that you can understand the case that we have determined n values okay by using ap so compared to that ap uh, method the gp method is going to provide a good distribution of speeds and even a material removal you can see is very small that is 43.92 then you can directly shift to the next speed then material removal is 34.83 and you can shift to the next speed that is n3 again a material removal is of 27.62 and you can shift to the next speed that is 60.154 which indicating that 
compared to AP, in AP, the material removal at N1 speed was around 109 mm. That was a huge amount of material has to be removed in order to shift to the next speed. So we would say that in this case, speed distribution is much better compared to arithmetic progression. Now, if you observe the last three speeds, so you are going to see that for uh, let's consider the case of N10. So see the 10th speed that is N10 is 241.856. Now corresponding to that, the diameter of a workpiece would be 26.32. Okay. Now how much material has to be removed in order to shift to the next speed that is N11, which is 304. So we would say 5.45 mm of material in order to shift to the next speed that is N11, 304 RPM. Now, after remove, now at 304 RPM, that is N11, we need to remove how much material to shift to the next speed, that is N12. So, we would say 4.32 uh, mm, which is going to arrive at a diameter of workpiece 16.5 mm. And at that value of diameter, we are going to shift to the next speed, that is 385 RPM. Which means you can understand that there is a huge difference in RPM, that is 241 to 304, directly jump to a high value. Then 304 to 385 RPM just for you by removing how much material? So by removing such a small values of material. So from that we can conclude that even in geometric progression, speed distribution at a higher RPMs, that is RPM N9, N10, N11, N12 is not proper. There is a huge variation in speed. There is a huge difference in a speed distribution which means it is not proper. So we can say that when compared with arithmetic progression, the geometric progression gives more optimum distribution of a gear speeds in a lower range, which means you can see after 30, there is 37, after 37, 47, after 47, 60, okay, after 60, 75. But in these higher RPM ranges, it is going to give a higher, a huge difference in speeds. That is after 191, you can see 241, after 241, it is 304. Which means GP is good in providing a speed distribution when it is in a low RPM range. But it is not proper distribution of speed in a high RPM range. So you can see I have written a conclusion that when uh, compared to AP, the GP is, give, is giving more optimum distribution of a gear speed. However, it is seen that at a low RPM range, at a low RPM range, still more speed ranges are desired than what is available. But it is good. Okay, compared to AP, it is good. Whereas at a higher RPM range, you can see some speed ranges available are not necessary or are we would say redundant. Okay, now let us see one more example. So this example is based on our equations which we have seen. So in a data, let's say it is given a six speed gearbox and minimum is 160 RPM and maximum is 1000 RPM. Now from this equation, only these three data are given. That is six speed, which means that is equal to six is given n minimum is given n maximum is given and what we need to determine so we would say we need to distribute a speed we need to determine speed we intermediate speeds from n minimum to n maximum that is our target to determine and that is also by using a geometric progression so how we can do that so can i say that we know the equation of range ratio that is rn rn is equal to n max by n minimum which would be equal to 6.25 okay that is 1000 upon 160 okay now even we know the relation between rn and phi right that is range ratio and gear ratio what is that so we can say that phi is equal to r n raised to 1 upon z minus 1 after substituting the values we can say it is equal to 1.4426 so remember by just using a three data that is z is equal to 6 n minimum is equals to 160 and maximum equals to 1000 we have determined what so we have determined range ratio r n and second gear ratio phi now, once we have obtained gear ratio, can I say that we can determine a successive spindle speeds available on our machine too. So how? So we can say that N1 is what? N minimum that is 160 RPM which is given a data. Now, what is the next speed? How we can determine that by using a geometric law? So we can say that N2 would be equal to N1 phi, N3 is equal to N2 phi, N4 is equal to N3 phi, N5 is equal to N4 phi and N6 is equal to N5 phi. Five. And that would be obviously it is going to come equal to n max, which is equal to 1000 RPM. So you can clearly see that n1 is 160, n2 is I have found out 230 RPM, n3 is 332 RPM approx, n4 is 480 RPM, n5 is 692 RPM, and n6 is 1000 RPM. So by using the geometric law, we have found out the different spindle speeds which could be available on our machine too.
Okay, guys. So I hope that you are clear in today's session in which we have discussed the geometric progression laws. We have seen a relationship between a range ratio and a gear ratio, and even we have seen that why geometric progression is more preferable compared to arithmetic progression. We have understood that by using a table. Okay, so in today's session we are keeping up till here. In our next session we will start with the next two progression laws, that is harmonic progression and logarithmic progression. So till then, stay tuned and thank you all.